Hello and welcome back to Math 301 Combinatorics at CSU. Today we're going to be talking about generating function operations. So we've been talking about generating functions in the last few videos, and this is moving on to section 7.3 in the book, which is operations on generating functions that are similar to things we can do to polynomials. Some things we can do to polynomials are add them together, multiply them together, plug in things for the variable in the polynomial, and take the derivative among other things. And we're gonna see to what extent we can define these operations for generating functions, which are an infinite version of polynomials. We've defined generating functions for infinite sequences of coefficients. And so the question is, are these things still well-defined and to what extent and how, how can we define them? So let's start with addition. So if we have two generating functions, f of x and g of x of the sequences a0, a1, a2, a3, and b0, b1, b2, b3, etc then we define the sum of f of x and g of x to be the generating function f of s, x plus g of x, defined to be the generating function of the sequence of sums a0 plus b0, a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, et cetera, um, added term-wise. So essentially we're combining like terms. You can think of it that way. You take a0 plus b0 for the constant term, and then you factor the x out of these two to get you a1 plus b1 as the second term and so on. So as an example, if I take the generating function of the sequence two to the n and the generating function of the sequence n, n times x to the n, then the sum is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n plus n times x to the n. So you just add things term-wise, writing these sums out in terms of actual uh, monomials, we get one plus two x plus four x squared plus ax cubed, et cetera. And then x plus two x squared plus three x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Those are those two summations we did up here. And again, you can think of it as just combining like terms. So there's a one a constant out front and then two X plus X is three X. So we get a three X as our next term. That's two to the one plus one. And then four X squared plus two X squared is six X squared. Eight X cubed plus three X cubed is 11 X cubed and so on. So we really are just adding terms um, component wise. So that's the, how we take sums of generating functions. Now let's look at products. So to multiply two generating functions, it's a little more involved. If you have f of x and g of x as before, then f of x times g of x is formed by first multiplying the two constant terms. a0 times b0 is the constant term of x to the zero in the new generating function. But then how, what are all the ways we could get x? Well, we can take a1x times b0 or a0 times b1x. And so we get these two terms, a0b1 plus a1b0 to get the coefficient of x. And this is just the definition of multiplication, but I'm, I'm explaining what the intuition is. You're taking one uh, sum and from here and one sum and from here and multiplying them together and asking how can we get x as the power of x, x to the one. Now, how can we get x to the two? Well, um, you can take a0 times b2x squared, or a1x times b1x, or a2x squared times b0. Those are all the ways to get an x squared in the product. And so you get this sum, a0b2 plus a1b1 plus a2b0. And in general, we notice we get a0bn plus a1bn minus one plus a2bn minus two, all the way up to anb0. So the, the subscripts of the a's go up as the subscripts of the b's go down. This you may have noticed this came up in the Catalan numbers recursion, this type of subscripts going up and down as you add products. And this is so famous, it's called a convolution. This is called the nth convolution of the sequences a and b, the a0, bn plus a1, bn minus one up to an, b0. So the multiplication formula is given by convoluting the coefficients. Let's look at an example of multiplication now. As a very simple example, say the first generating function that we're multiplying by is just x. So x, remember, is the generating function of the sequence 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, where it's 0 plus 1x plus 0x squared, etc. And so we can think of x that way. And the question is, what, does, what happens when we multiply this generating function of the b sequence by x? Well, if we just use the definition of multiplication with this big sequence, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, First, we multiply the constant terms. We get 0 times b0 for that first term. And then for the second term, we get 0 times b1 plus 1 times b0. Those are the all the ways of making an x out of these um, products. 
And then we get similarly a zero B2 plus one B1 plus zero B0. So again, we're taking this convolution formula of these two sequences. The next convolution is zero B3 plus one B2 plus zero times everything else. So zero B1, zero B0. And all those zeros go away. And we can just write this as the only thing that survives from this term is B0. And the only one from this term is B1 and then B2 and so on. So we get B0x plus B1x squared plus B2x cubed, et cetera. Now notice this is the same thing as if we would have just distributed the x through the infinite summation. So this x times this summation, using the official definition of generating function multiplication, we do get what we would expect if we were allowed to just distribute x across the infinite summation. So that's just saying multiplying by x does actually shift these coefficients over. Um, it, in particular, we can even think of what, of it, what does it do to the sequence b sub n? Well, if we write it in summation notation, we notice that x times the sum of b sub n x to the n is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of b sub n minus one x to the n. You notice now we have b2 on x3. It's one less subscript than it is the exponent. So it takes this sequence b0, b1, b2, dot, 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 and actually just pads it with a zero. It puts a zero in front, that's the new constant term, and it shifts the rest of the sequence over one space. So there are all the different ways of thinking of multiplying by x. So if you're looking at manipulating sequences and you want to shift the index, you might want to multiply the generating function by x. So now let's look at a, a similar example. What if we multiply by a power of x? Multiplying by x to the m, well, by a similar argument, you can show that x to the m also distributes through, and you get a0 x to the m plus a1 x to the m plus 1 plus a2 x to the m plus 2, etc. So in other words, we can think of this as the generating function of the sequence formed by shifting the sequence a0, a1, a2, m steps to the right and padding it with m zeros in the front. So multiplying by x shifts it once, multiplying by x squared shifts it twice, and so on. And this really comes in handy, as we'll see, especially in the next lecture video. Let's look at another example. <clears throat> Instead of we multiply by x, we multiply by x to the m. Let's multiply by a slightly more complicated polynomial, 1 minus x. So it's not just a monomial anymore. What does multiplying by 1 minus x do? Well, again, thinking of 1 minus x as 1 minus x plus 0x squared plus 0x cubed, etc., we see that using the convolution formula, the first term is 1 times a0. And then the second term to get an x is um, a1, 1 times a1 minus 1 times a0 is a1 minus a0. Then the next one is going to be a2 minus a1 plus 0 times something, but we don't count that. And so in general, we'll always get you know a3 minus a2 and a4 minus a3 and so on. We'll get a n minus a n minus 1 as the coefficient of x to the n. And so multiplying by 1 minus x takes consecutive differences of the sequence that we're dealing with. Let's look at an example here where we multiply 1 minus x by the generating function of the all ones sequence, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, et cetera. Well, now all of these successive differences, 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 1 and 1 minus 1, et cetera, are all 0. And so we get just the generating function 1 as the answer. And so we have actually the product of 1 minus x and this big generating function is just 1. Now, I want to point out one um, method that could have actually simplified our computation above a little bit, which is that generating functions with the addition of multiplication that we've defined, you can show that they satisfy the distributive law. And we're just going to take this as a fact uh, for this course. So they satisfy the distributive law. In addition, addition and multiplication are associative and commutative, and they have all the nice properties you might expect that an addition and multiplication would have. So what that means is that if you have f of x plus g of x, times h of x, you can take f of x times h of x plus g of x times h of x. So it's the usual distributive law that works for polynomials. So to use that in this example, we could have interpreted this as 1 plus negative x and distributed that across this sum. So we take 1 times the big sum minus x times the big sum, and we get these two terms. And now we can just use our rule for multiplying by x. So we get this big sum, we'll copy it again, 1 plus x plus x squared, et cetera 
minus x minus x squared minus x cubed, et cetera. And now by the, by the formula for adding generating functions, we notice that everything cancels except that one. So the x minus x is zero, x squared minus x squared is zero, et cetera. We just add the similar terms and all we're left with is one. So that's somehow a more intuitive way of doing it by just breaking it up uh, using the distributive law for a finite polynomial. Now notice we had this formula, one minus X times this gigantic generating function equals one. Whenever we have something like that, if a generating function F of X times G of X equals one, then our notation that we're gonna use is for, for fractions of generating functions is we write G of X is one over F of X and F of X is one over G of X. So fractions are defined very similarly to how we define fractions and division for ordinary numbers. It's just when two things multiply to give you one, then they're reciprocals of each other. So given that one minus X times this big summation equals one, we can write this as one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus dot 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 equals one over one minus X. And so we have in some sense of formula, a closed formula for this generating function without any summation or dot 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 one over one minus X. And that's called the geometric series formula. You may have seen this in a different context where X is a very small number and it actually converges, um, but we're not gonna worry about convergence right now. We're thinking of this just as a generating function of this sequence and writing it in this closed form formula that, that we can then manipulate a lot easier rather than writing out all these terms every time. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this now. Um, given the, the geometric series formula, we can actually ask what happens when we multiply a generating function by a geometric series. So the previous products we've done were always a polynomial times a generating function. Let's do a big generating function times a generating function. So the geometric series one plus x plus x squared plus dot 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 times a generating function of the sequence a gives you by the convolution formula one times a zero for this one and then one times a zero plus one times a one one times a zero plus one times a one plus one times a two, et cetera. All the ones just go away and you get the partial sums, a zero plus a one plus a two up to a n for the, the coefficient of x to the n. So we can write the coefficient of x to the n here is the sum of the first uh, n plus one elements of the sequence, a zero plus a one plus a n. So the tip is multiplying by one over one minus x gives you the sequence of partial sums of whatever sequence you started with that you're looking at the generating function of. Let's apply this in the case of um, multiplying the geometric sequence series by itself. Say we take one over one minus x squared. That's one over one minus x times itself, which we can think of this as this big generating function of one, 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 one. And now by this trick, we, we know that it's the partial sums. So one is the first coefficient and then you have one plus one as the second coefficient and one plus one plus one as the third and so on. And so we get this generating function one plus two X plus three X cubed plus four X to the fourth plus et cetera. So that's just the generating function of the counting number sequence. So here we have a closed formula one over one minus X squared for this new sequence that we hadn't been um, looking at before, but this is a way of getting a closed formula for more sequences, multiplying them together. Let's look at another operation called monomial substitution. So with ordinary polynomials, we could plug in any numbers we want into a generating function. We can plug in one or, or five or anything like that. For generating functions, we have to be more careful. For instance, if we plugged in one for X here in this big generating function, one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16, et cetera, that just blows up to infinity. That's not well-defined. But we can substitute some things in for X to get different generating functions. In particular, you can substitute in a monomial for X like two X or in general, C times X to the A where A is, is non-zero. So here, let's look at what happens when we substitute two X in for the geometric series, one plus two X plus two X squared plus two X cubed, et cetera. That's, you, just, you can just expand these out um, as, as exponents and get one plus two X plus four X squared plus eight X cubed. So we get the generating function for the sequence of powers of two. So in general, we can plug in C, CX to the A for any formula for f of x to get a new generating function identity um, where a is at least one. So you're not plugging in a constant. And so here's another example. Say we take the, that geometric series formula and we plug in x squared for x. 
Well, now it's one plus x squared plus x squared squared plus x squared cubed, etc. Because I just put x squared as the new base. But then expanding out these exponents, we know that that's one plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth, all the even powers of x. And that's the generating function of the sequence one zero one zero one zero one zero, etc. Now let's look at differentiation. So differentiation is defined somewhat intuitively if you've seen differentiation of power series. So the definition of differentiating the power, the generating function f of x equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, et cetera, is we define ddx of f of x to be a1. So a0 goes away, and then you take a1 times 1. And then um, if the derivative of x squared is 2x, and so we make this 2a2x and then 3a3x squared, and so on. So we really differentiate term by term in the way you might expect. So let's try this for, um, the, again, the geometric series, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, et cetera. The, the fun fact is that we're not going to prove what we're going to use as a fact in this course is that differentiation rules um, they, they have, all the usual rules still apply for generating functions. So the, the, the sum rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule for um, differentiation all apply for generating functions using this definition. And so we can differentiate both sides of this equation. On the left-hand side, the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 over 1 minus x squared, just using the, the ordinary chain rule and power rule. And then on the right-hand side, you get um, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, et cetera. So this gives a different proof of that same equation that we found on the previous page by multiplying 1 over 1 minus x by itself. So sometimes there's more than one way of using a generating function operation to get a new identity. OK, so here's another tip. Um, if you want to multiply the nth term of your sequence by n, you want to differentiate the generating function and then multiply by x. And the reason is differentiating the generating function does multiply your consecutive terms by n, but notice the power of x is off. So this is 2a2 times x. I want that x to be an x squared to match all these 2s. And I want that x squared to be an x cubed to match all these 3s, and so on. And the way we can achieve that is just by multiplying this whole sequence by x. So if I take x d dx f of x, well, that's now a1x plus 2a2x squared plus 3a3x cubed. In fact, I even have a hidden 0a0x to the 0 over here that, we, that isn't written. But this now can be written as the sum of n times a sub n times x to the n as n goes from 0 to infinity. Because again, that 0 term just vanishes when n is 0. And so this is a very helpful tool. So if you want to multiply the nth term of your sequence by n, you take x d dx and apply it to the generating function. Here's an example for a sub n equals n times 2 to the n. If we want to find the generating function for that, we start with the generating function for 2 to the n, which we have found by monomial substitution before. We plug in 2x in for the geometric series. And then we take x d dx of that formula in order to multiply the nth term by n. So we know the generating function for n times 2 to the n is whatever this is. So the derivative of 1 over 1 minus 2x is going to be 2 over 1 minus 2x squared uh, by the chain rule. And then that x comes in the numerator as well. So we'll get the answer of 2x over 1 minus 2x squared. And voila, we have found another closed form for this generating function of this sequence that we can then use uh, to study the sequence. And we'll see how these closed formulas come in handy in the next video for finding formulas for a sequence. But for now, let's just try to find more closed formulas for generating functions. So now you try to find a closed formula for the generating function of the sequence b0, b1, b2, etc., defined by bn equals n times 3 to the n plus 1. So this one looks a little bit like the n times 2 to the n that we just did, but then you're going to have to use addition of generating functions to add this one in. So that's all for today, and we'll see you next time.